The committee is out of recess. Uh, we are back on the record. Earlier today, we heard testimony from Mr. Luta Rene, the governor's nomination to the Virgin Islands Casino Control Commission. And at this time, the committee will consider bill number 35-006, bill number 35-0011, number 35-007, and bill number 35009. Clerk, are there any correspondence to be read into record from any committee member? No, Madam Chair. So I'll begin to ask who speaks on the behalf of bill number 35-006. I do, Madam Chair. You may proceed. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, bill number 35-0006 is a bill that is honoring and commending former Senator George E. Goodwin for his many years of expansive contributions to the Virgin Islands community as a whole and to rename the cricket field located on parcel H of track one in Estate Nazareth St. Thomas, Virgin Islands in his honor, and also to award former Senator, the Honorable George E. Goodwin, the Virgin Islands Medal of Honor. This bill was properly vetted and discussed extensively in the Committee on Government Operations, Veterans Affairs, and Consumer Protection about a week ago. And we had a large amount of individuals who have worked extensively with this good, great man over the years. One of the main items that he is known for is, of course, that landmark legislation, well, landmark judgment from the district court judge, Americ Christian, in the case of Hoser versus Evans, which allowed persons who, immigrant persons who were here in the Virgin Islands to be educated in the public school system. That in itself, and he was one of the leaders of the alien interest movement. I had the pleasure and the honor, more importantly, of working for this great man from 1998 to 2000, oh my piece, 2007. And I will say, that he always carried himself with a level of humility. He carried himself with a level of distinction. He was loyal to our Democratic Party. He helped merge the marriages of the first elected Democrat to governor of the Virgin Islands. That would be Alexander Farrelly and Derek Hodge. And also the marriage and I would say because they are gubernatorial teams of uh, Turnbull as well with James and then Turnbull with Richards. What a great man. I am a fervent believer in giving people their roses while they are on top of good, the God's good earth. And so my colleagues, I want to thank you uh, for signing on. And we have a number of colleagues who have signed on at this proposal, this proposed bill, including the Honorable Donna A. Fred Gregory, Milton E. Potter, Alma Francis Heiliger, Ray Fonseca, and Marvin A. Individual. I do have, Madam Chair, two amendments just so that we are clear in history and it's properly uh, uh, delineated on this legislation, his contributions in the field of cricket, one, and also to appropriate some monies for the signage. Madam Chair, I hope and I pray that all of my colleagues here present and those going forward will support this piece of legislation in honor of the Honorable George E. Goodwin. Thank you kindly, Madam Chair, for the time. 
You're welcome, Senator Carla Joseph. Um, at this time, I'd like to recognize non-committee member, Senate President, um, Senator Francis, I can't see your face, but thank you for your attendance. Um, who speaks on bill number 35-007? I do, Madam Chair. You may proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Colleagues, uh, good morning again. I speak in reference to bill number 35-0011 an act honoring and commending former Senator Horace A. Calwood Sr. posthumously for his dedication, service, and commitment to the people of the Virgin Islands and naming the North Shore Street immediately east of Windward Passage in his memory. I had the opportunity to be present and support this bill during the February 28, 2023 government operations where most of my colleagues and myself were able to speak to the then testifiers about the work that former Senator Horace Calwood has done for our community and our society as a whole. And I believe that it is most commendable for him to be posthumously honored uh, with this endeavor. And I'm looking forward to voting in the affirmative when the time comes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Bolkes. Senator DeGraff, acknowledging that your presence in St. Thomas, are you, you are also a sponsor of this Bill 35-007, correct? I, yes, Madam Chair, I am the sponsor. You may I speak to it. You can speak on behalf of the bill also. Uh, thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, bill number 35-0007, an act honoring and commending Mr. Boyd, Boise, Orlando, Tadman, for his many the Harris Court area, the new housing. Um, he has created, along with former Senator Allison Petros, Ali Petros, the Zero Tolerance Basketball um, Tournament and Organization. Uh, Mr. Ha Todd Munferder went down with it, and for over 20 years, 20, 21 years or so, he has been mentoring young men. The Zero Tolerance organization um, stands for uh, stands against drugs, alcohol, violence, bad attitudes, and negative behavior. And they um, put discipline on sportsmanship, teamwork, and positive behavior by providing a positive environment for the youth uh, to mature into outstanding athletes who are educated, healthy, honest, and productive members of our society and world. Uh, he has mentored and assisted hundreds of our young men and steered them away from crime and gave them an opportunity to be productive citizens in the world. Um, I would like to also thank um, my, my colleague, the senator from Wrong the Field. I, I, she also made an amendment to name the Ozo Harris, Baske Ozo Harris Court Basketball Court after Mr. Boise Boy Tadman. Uh, I thank you very much for that. Also, the um, former colleagues who signed on on it, Senator, um, former colleagues or the other colleagues who signed on on it. I'm not a member of this committee. I'm asking for a favorable vote in this committee to move it forward to the full body to make this a reality. Uh, thank you for the time, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator DeGraff. Just for clarification, um, Senator Bolkus has already spoken on bill number 35-0011. But now, um, who speaks on bill number 35-009? I do, Madam Chair. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Colleagues, good morning again, and thank you. Uh, I support bill number 35-0009, an act amending Title I Virgin Islands Code Chapter 11A relating to the observation of national holidays and enacting the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act to declare Juneteenth or June 19th illegal holiday in the Virgin Islands. It is imperative that we as a society always put our freedom and emancipation on the forefront and also commend those that did the same as 
people of color in our society. We celebrate many, many holidays here in the Virgin Islands that do not always necessarily correlate with our very own upbringing or traditions. However, we are a people of a melting pot of society and respect many. And Juneteenth is a celebration that we all must be able to commend the works and efforts of individuals who had to fight for their freedom, much like us here in the Virgin Islands. Uh, so I'm looking forward to supporting this endeavor. There is an amendment that we will be providing concerning supporting the educational component of Juneteenth in our schools. And I'm looking forward to bringing forward that amendment at the appropriate time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Bokas. At this time, there are no testifiers for this block. Madam Clerk, are there any correspondence to be read into record from any of the testifiers? Yes, Madam Chair. Please proceed. Read a correspondence for Horace Coward on bill number 35-0011. Horace Coward, Democratic Breakfast Club, Edward Bird 35-0011, an act honoring and commending Horace A. Coward Sr. posthumously for his dedication, service, and commitment to the people of the Virgin Islands. Dear Senator Capehart, it is with great pleasure, honor, and humility that I offer my views on honoring the late Honorable Senator Horace Callwood for his service and commitment to the people of the Virgin Islands. As I mentioned in my testimony before the Committee on Government Operations, Veterans Affairs, and Consumer Protection, the Honorable Horace A. Cowood served the people of the Virgin Islands in his capacity as Senator in the 7th Legislature, 1967 to 68, and the 8th Legislature, 1969 to 70. However, his dedication and commitment to serving the people of the Virgin Islands continued for decades after his tenure in office. With his guidance and mentoring of many elected officials that followed his footsteps, his assistance to the many in need of financial, emotional, and personal help, or merely being a positive role model for many of us to follow, he was a beacon of hope for many. The realization that his service to the community and his fellow Virgin Islanders resembled that of an iceberg came to me upon our loss of him with so many people approaching me with their testimonies on what he did for them without public or even family disclosure. This allowed me to gain the insight that his acts of kindness were not for notoriety, fame, or praise, but for the love of his people and that we may never really grasp the full extent of what he has done for his full and many of us. Horace is truly missed by so many of us and to traverse a road named in his honor to meet with members of the club named in his honor truly would be a heartfelt appreciation for someone that gave so much and wanted so little in return. In closing, I humbly thank you for this opportunity to express my appreciation and so sincerely, Eduardo J. Cornero Jr., President HCDBC. Dated March 6, 2023, Statement for VI Legislative Rules and Judiciary Committee, offered by Gregory Goodwin. Good morning, members of the 35th Lent, the eldest son of the Honorable George E. Goodwin and the former Bernice Pick M. Pickering. I offer this statement in support of Bill Number 35-0006, an act honoring and commending former Senator George E. Goodwin for his decades of wide-ranging contributions to the advancement of life in the Virgin Islands community. To rename the cricket field located on parcel H of Tract 1, Estate Nazareth St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, in his honor, and to award him the Virgin Islands Medal of Honor and for other related purposes. Starting with his successful lawsuit against the Virgin Islands government under Governor Evans, 
to allow the education of all children residing in the Virgin Islands, not just the ones born here. George Goodwin has been nothing short of a fiscal and social advocate savant for the United States Virgin Islands. He founded the Alien Interest Movement, an organization dedicated to advocating for those seeking to legally immigrate to the USVI. Throughout that organ th through that organization, he personally prepared the necessary documentation in the legal process for thousands of people to become either citizens or permanent residents. During the 70s, he was the lead director for CETA, Comprehensive Employment and Training Act, an extension of the Department of Labor tasked with training workers and providing them with jobs in public service. In essence, in a situation that took years to develop, one where Caribbean immigrants, people that share our reflection, ancestry, and blood were viewed and acted upon unfavorably by contemporary VI society, societal and labor practices, Goodwin guided thousands through the process to be singular multi-layered accomplishment is perhaps the largest legacy he leaves to the Virgin Islands. It paves the way to allow many others to contribute to our culture, heritage, function, and legacy. The Virgin Islands do not grow to foster a Nicholas Friday, a Timothy Duncan, a large number of our legislature, past and present, senators and legislative aides electing both governors. Appointed to run the government employees retirement system by Governor Farrelly, he led the then indebted program back into the black and left it with a surplus at the end of his tenure. He also seeded the idea with Governor Farrelly and the VI government should purchase, that the VI government should purchase WICO after being approached by the Danish government shortly after his term at GRS began. Goodwin served two terms in the VI legislature as a senator, where a quite powerful yet underrated VI, the de facto researcher for the government, for the VI government, ending out such work with US mainland firms. Like the idea to purchase WICO, this bill created, created an economic multiplier within the, ver within the territory by directing, redirecting funds that were leaving the territory back into it, feeding the territory economically while further developing pride and competence in our own professional abilities. Goodwin also practiced smaller fiscal measures meant to eliminate wasteful government spending some of which are practiced by VI senators today, such as not having a government car or cell phone paid, with, paid for with taxpayer money outside the salary provided. Goodwin served as a congressional aide to both Rhonda Luga and Donna Christensen while they were the USVI's delegate to Congress, bookending his government and political career. In addition to founding the Alien Interest Movement, George Goodwin was also an active member on several other civic organizations over the years, including the VI Port Authority Board, the VI Cricket Association, the Caribbean Development Correlation and Association of Caribbean Organizations, among others. Goodwin was also the first director for Blue Cross Blue Shield, first few years as a health insurance provider in the territory. He also maintained Goodwin's bookkeeping service, providing tax preparation and accounting services to the community from the early 70s until the mid 2010s. George Goodwin always considered himself a man of the people, a man that led others through the action of selfless service. My, per my personal observation setting aside our relationship as father and son, but he is the type of leader that one rarely sees with plenty of conflicting traits. George Goodwin has always been a proud and confident, confident man, yet humble enough to use and appreciate preparation and strategy. He, always, he has always been popular yet approachable, relatable and engaging with yet discreet and somehow 
not an attention seeker. To this day, I still meet people he forged re relationships with that I did not know he knew. Yet for all that time he spent out, he always let us know that family is his pr first priority. He would drop everything to respond to the needs of his family. He never sought attention for his accomplishments, nor did he feel the need to brag of them, yet was quietly prideful and acu acutely aware of their impact. His contributions to the sport of cricket in the VI throughout the VI Cricket Association and his social justice and political service to the Virgin Islands were nothing short of exemplary, yet always spoke the desire of wanting to see his, his home, the Virgin Islands, operate at a higher level than it what was at the time. He always felt driven to help that along. On a personal level, in addition to his obvious love of cricket and time with family and friends, he enjoyed reading about other political figures abroad. The occasional game of chess, checkers, and dominoes, or dominoes, soca music and TV series such as The Jeffersons, Magnum P.I., Burn Notice, Blue Bloods, and Madame Secretary. He enjoyed teasing local and regional cuisine, fellowship in the Anglican Church, and has an uh, understated talent for drawing and painting. After the death of his wife, the former Bernice Pickering, he now resides comfortably at a senior retirement home where he is, where he is its most active member. This ends the reading. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, I will entertain my committee members and non-committee members. You will have four minutes as our first round for any lines of comments to your, the legislation that we have before us today. Four, four minutes for the block on all four measures. Um, Senator Bokes, you may proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, colleagues. Good afternoon to the listening and viewing audience. I am in so, full support of all the measures in this block, uh, Bill number 35-006, an act amending, uh, honoring and commending former Senator George E. Goodwin for all of his efforts. Also in support of Bill number 35-0011, an act honoring and commending former Senator Horace A. Calwood po posthumously for his dedication and service and commitment. Bill number 35-0007, a resolution honoring and commending Mr. Boyd Boise Olanzo Tadman for his many years of contribution to the youth and people of the Virgin Islands. And lastly, Bill number 35-0009, uh, instituting uh, Juneteenth National uh, Independence Day, uh, declaring it here as a holiday here in the Virgin Islands. Madam Chair, I thank you for the time. Thank you, Senator Bocas. Uh, now I'd like to acknowledge uh, non-committee member, Senator Blyden. Thank you for your attendance. Um, Senator Collar Joseph, you may proceed with four minutes for this block of bills. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. I will not need all four minutes because all of these legislations were properly vetted in the committee which I chair, which is the Committee on Government Operations, Veterans Affairs, and Consumer Protection. I stand firm uh, in my support of all four measures before us this day to be considered by the committee. And I am very pleased uh, to hear that George Goodwin's eldest son, Gregory Goodwin, found it fitting to provide a testimony once again for this committee. I did get a call from one of his, uh, Senator Goodwin's, um, Former Chief of Staff, Ms. Brown, uh, she's, of course, Warren E. Brown's daughter. I don't remember her 
her married name, and she too sung his praises as a staff member. I also want to say that I'm, I'm very pleased to have signed on to a number of the legislations here, and I am looking forward for them to be enacted. Thank you so kindly, uh, Madam Chair, and, and I do have two amendments and one technical amendment to offer to Bill 35-0006. Thank you kindly. Thank you, Senator Joseph. Senator Bolkus, I wanted to ask um, regarding the Juneteenth bill. Um, it's already designated as a federal holiday. Why do we need to vote on, don't, why do, it's a question being asked throughout the territory. I think this is a perfect time to ask. Um, please inform the public and myself. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'll start off by saying that the efforts of the African diaspora when it comes, when it comes to emancipating ourselves um, and the process that we had to use, in most cases, uh, they had to be very aggressive and we had to fight and nevertheless, some cases kill for our freedom from our oppressors. I, I believe it's important that uh, the efforts of all African people across the planet from that time until now should be commended uh, in any way, shape, or form as a society that had to emancipate themselves on several occasions here in the Virgin Islands and some of the things that we had to do in order to attain that very freedom that we wanted for ourselves and our children and our children's children. Um, we, we must remember that we all came from one place, and this place is the cradle of life, Africa, as black people. And the efforts of those individuals that emancipated themselves in this specific case, which is federally supported across the United States of America, which we are a territory of, uh, I believe that we should also join them in celebration uh, in order to show our unity as a territory, uh, as part of the United States of America. I believe Juneteenth has a lot of similarities to what we have had to go through through our emancipation process. Uh, there's only but one pathway when you are enslaved to attain freedom. And usually that pathway uh, has a lot to do with fighting for your rights and doing what must be done in order to attain them. So for me, I see a lot of similarities. Uh, and I believe that as a territory, as a nation, as we continue to grow and find our identity, uh, when we begin to have talks about our constitutional convention and where we want to go, as a territory, I think that these are all pieces of what we would call our uh, identity overall. So I hope that I was able to explain to the listening and viewing audience. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Bolkes. At this time, I'll have uh, Senator Johnson with your four minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I, I sure thought someone was going before me. I'm I'll be supporting most of these uh, measures in this block. And, you know, when I go through the whereas class, especially in uh, former Senator Goodwin, and I see where he uh, was a part of this legislation when it comes to the alien interest movement, it, it made me think back on my grandparents, Ralph Johnson and Martina Johnson, who banded a lot of people in the Eastern Caribbean when they came here to make the Virgin Islands their home. That was something that my, my grandfather was proud about when, you, when I speak to him, what he did to assist some of the folks from the Eastern Caribbean and any Caribbean island that came here. And when he, when he speak to me about it is, is when I learned that I had some family tied to Barbados. So when we dig deep, all of us, you'll find out our connection throughout this Caribbean. 
And so I look at this as, as great things, and this gentleman has seemed to have been a giant in his time, so I definitely we supporting it. And then when I look at Horace and I go through his whereas class, it, 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 it touched me a little about who I, who I am as a person. And I look at line 15 in his whereas class where Horace taught you that the, a person honor was what mattered most not money, not money. He would always proclaim not how he died, but how did he live. Not what he did he gained, but what did he give. These are some very core value of who I am as a person when it comes to dealing with people. So at the appropriate time, Madam Chair, I will definitely be supporting most of these measures, not all at this time. So thank you very much. I, I will, re, you know, release the rest of my time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Johnson. Senator Milton Potter, you may proceed with your four minutes. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, absolutely, I rise in support of all of the measures in Block 2. Um, they were all properly vetted in the Committee of Jurisdiction, uh, I think about at least a week ago. Absolutely, starting with um, Bill Number 35-0006, the Act honoring and commending former Senator George E. Goodwin for his many years of contributions to the people of the Virgin Islands. I have a personal stake in this because the Goodwin families and the Potter families were very close. Uh, we became good friends in the early 70s. I know Senator Goodwin hailed from the island of Antigua and uh, much of my family roots also lie uh, on the island of Antigua. So we became very uh, close uh, during those early days. Um, Senator Goodwin is a classic example of someone who has put service above self. And the work that he has done on behalf of particularly the early days of the um, alien interest movement, I think are legendary terms of just shifting the way that persons who emigrate from the Eastern Caribbean to the territory are viewed. Uh, I think history will reflect on uh, the important role that he played in this regard. So that definitely should not be um, underestimated at all. So I commend the bill sponsor for initiating this bill and I'm pleased to have signed on um, on this bill. I also, of course, support Bill 35-0011, honoring and commending uh, Harris Carlwood. Uh, Harris Carlwood is also a legend, a local legend. Uh, he's a political Two icon, uh, businessman, an activist, and an influencer in terms of just the political direction uh, and the social and economic development of the Virgin Islands. So he played a big role in that regard. Also, my good friend, uh, Mr. Boyd, Boise, Alonzo Tadman, um, a coach and uh, an influencer in his own right. Uh, there's, a, there's a saying that says a good coach does what it takes to win games and a great coach changes lives. And uh, Boise Tadman has impacted hundreds, if not thousands of young Virgin Islanders through the game of uh, basketball. So his role and his impact has been significant um, for sure. And finally, the celebration of Juneteenth as a permanent paid holiday in the territory. We recognize that it is a federal holiday, but along with the 21 other states and the District of Columbia, uh, this initiative is going to make that holiday a permanent paid uh, holiday here in the territory and I'm proud to have signed on also on that initiative. Uh, Madam Chair, at the appropriate time, I will vote in the affirmative for all of the items in this block here today. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Senator Potter. Senator Maurice James, you may proceed with your four minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
I want to begin by quoting um, James Baldwin, who said that the paradox of education is precisely this, that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which he is being educated. And so when I looked at the, the Juneteenth um, bill, I, I said, you know, with our history, clearly we were emancipated before and we fought for it before. Um, the black Americans got their emancipation. And Juneteenth really is the day when they realized that they were emancipated. Um, the, the thing about becoming a, a, a territory of the United States of America is that we embrace all their history. That's what we do because we are members of the United States government, right? But my only, my only I think, um, concern sometimes is that they don't recognize our history, our VI history. Well, we go and recognize theirs. But I understand the purpose of the bill. As um, my colleague said, unity among all of us as African descendants. And clearly, we all came um, from the, the Africa, and we have to remember that we were great before we came here. We were great. The pyramids themselves tell us how great we were. So we took a dive when we were brought over. But in fact, we were great before. As uh, Jimmy Cliff, Cliff said, my ancestors were mighty men. Um, so I understand the purpose of that bill. I want to also say that I, come, uh, I definitely be believe that all three of the men who are being uh, honored and commended today are, are deserving of, of, those, uh, of that commendation and honor. I want to point out that as a basketball player, um, who grew up in Ralph D. Chabot project and played on that basketball court that is still there, even though the rest of it has been destroyed, demolished, that I understand the importance of the work that Mr. Boyd Boise Orlando Todman did. I didn't have someone in, in Chabot project like, like, like he, um, where he began coaching teams for neighborhood minute, tournaments. But I had two close friends John Abramson and the late Clayton Richards, who coached me. And actually, I think because of them, I ended up, and that basketball court in Shabbat Project, I ended up getting a, a scholarship, a basketball scholarship to George Washington University. I want to end um, by saying that when it came to um, Mr. Goodwin, I knew of him, I heard him, of him even before I met him. And what was interesting when I saw this recognition, which is very important because this is part of our history. And for me, I remember when I told my, my daughter, Sydney, um, when she was young, that I remember when people said that I had married an alien, her eye opened wide and she was like, what? Mommy, what are you talking about? And in her mind, she's thinking Mars, the planet. And I said to her, that's part of our history because of the United States. They were the ones who called them aliens, not Virgin Islanders. We were using a term that actually still exists. If you go to the federal code, if you go to federal law, it still exists as a word. And I told her the problem was that that word began to separate us as black people. And that's what's important for us today as we recognize this good man who had the courage to do what he did, to fight for the interests of people who, like him, were having a difficult time in our society. So today Ten. I definitely, Madam Chair, may I continue? Yes, you may proceed. Yeah, I'll wrap up. I, I definitely want to, um, say that I'm happy my colleague brought this bill forward and that we teach our children about our history, good and bad, things that we were influenced by as United States citizens and United States law. But remember, at the end of the day, we all came and began in Africa. And I will support these bills. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator James, Senator Gittins, you may proceed with your four minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon to all. I was uh, proud to support the measure to honor 
uh, Senator George Goodwin in the Committee of Jurisdiction, and I am proud to do so once again. We know that uh, he has served his community uh, most honorably, both in and out of office. Uh, and without question, he is someone that made tremendous difference in the lives of many Virgin Islanders. As for uh, former Senator Harris Calwood, uh, the loss of uh, Mr. Calwood is, is felt so strongly in our community. Uh, we all miss his presence and his insights. I was very uh, moved by the testimony of his family uh, in the Committee of Jurisdiction. And again, uh, as I sit here, I will support uh, the measure. And it is quite fitting to name uh, the road uh, in his honor. As for Mr. Boise Todman, I'm also pleased to support the resolution in his honor. Uh, Mr. Todman, who did so much to support our youth and athletics in the territory. And with regards to the uh, Juneteenth holiday, I want to uh, express my support again and also support the uh, good sponsors of this measure. And we'll just lean a little further in the explanation that uh, with the, uh, the reason for Juneteenth, a uh, year or so ago after, um, or I, I should say a year after President Biden had signed into law uh, Juneteenth, only some 24 states at, and the District of Columbia had actually recognized or passed legislation or executive order to uh, actually absolve Juneteenth as a paid federal holiday. Uh, the respective states and territories were responsible to do this uh, respectively. So now the Virgin Islands will join those other 24 state, uh, states and the District of Columbia to now uh, observe Juneteenth as a paid holiday in the US Virgin Islands. So at the appropriate time, Madam Chair, I will cast my uh, support for all four of these measures. Congratulations to all the uh, bill sponsors of these measures. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Gittins. Senator Francis, you may proceed with four minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Good day to you, my colleagues. Good day to the people of the Virgin Islands. I too will be supporting all of the measures that's before us um, in this particular block. And um, you know, a lot of time this body gets accused of, of um, wasting time in movement of resolutions, you know, where we're honoring and commending those individuals that have made contribution to this community. And if we don't do it, who else will? It's so important that we take the time out to really celebrate the work that have been done by you know our our people you know so certainly i stand proud and, and ready to support the measure before us george goodwin again in bill 35.0006 i want to commend the bill sponsor i've been around i've been around when there was a lot of conversations about the alien movement i've been around of course being the son of a, a, a migrant um, who relocated from the island of Antigua to the Virgin Islands in 1959. You know, when uh, at a time you hear the stories where island people were being rounded up, you had to be bonded, it was difficult to attend school. They actually created an alien school uh, just to isolate and, and uh, put our, our people from the other islands into. You know, so it's, we have come a long, long way and as a result of some of the work that have been done by George Goodwin and others, you know, help us. And um, we stand on their shoulder today, consequential to their work. So, you know, I, I get goose pimples just thinking about the fact that if, that if this had continued without the intervention of individuals such as uh, Senator Goodwin, uh, Mr. Goodwin and Accountant Goodwin, where we would be today. You know, so... Um, I have no qualms in being able to support this measure as well as uh, to sign on as, as a sponsor 
uh, co-sponsor as well. Horace Calwood, again, what I call a political guru, um, a political czar, an individual that you know were able to wheel a big stick, leg legendary in his time in being able to support um, you know the movement of um, several governors. You know, again, I'm happy to to be a part of that. Boise, a boy, Boise, uh, Tadman, I didn't know him personally, but certainly could appreciate the work that he have done in this uh, this community and the basketball individuals that, that he have been able to support to have gone on um, and perhaps even save a lot of those young men from the life of crime. It's commendable that we're paying tribute to that. And of course, Juneteenth, um, I, I support this measure and uh, I know that there's a lot of conversation whether or not um, this needs to happen locally because it's already a federal holiday, but the issue is that to ensure that there is local payments for those individuals that don't get to enjoy just the, the, the holiday, but in fact, they work as essential employees of this government of the Virgin Islands and need to be compensated for that. Um, I had the opportunity to sit in on the um, a youth symposium that's going on with health equities over at Carambola this morning where there are some individuals here from South Africa. And the way they celebrate, even individuals have gone from the Virgin Islands to be a part of, of, of their, this cultural movement, cultural movement, you know, is, is something that, that warmed my heart and really gave me goose pimples. We need to start to celebrate our people here in this community and have an appreciation for the work that they're doing. So um, I stand in full support of all of the measures here. And I want to commend the bill sponsor for their bold initiatives that despite, you know, the the naysayers that in fact we'll continue to move resolution to honor and commend all people. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for the time. You're welcome, Senator Francis. Senator Blyden, you may proceed with four minutes. Three minutes. Thank four minutes, sorry. Thank you, <laughs> Madam Chair. Good afternoon to my colleagues. Viewing, listening, audience, staff, central staff, and I did, um, I did vote for all of these measures in the committee of jurisdiction, and I, I am also a sponsor of most of these um, resolutions. But let me speak briefly um, to former Senator George Goodwin. Um, he honestly has made a contribution here in the territory, not only as an advocate, but he was actually a human rights. Um, he, can, he campaigned for human rights for many individuals. He did, as was stated by my colleague in terms of bonding, he advocated for social justice also, and he was a negotiator. So I believe um, he, he is, this, his honor is well deserved, and I, will, I did sponsor that legislation, and I want to thank the main sponsor for bringing it forward. How is Calwood also, uh, his contribution to the territory as a businessman, a former senator, he was my advisor. Uh, he and his business partners have also done a lot in the space of housing and assuring that people get uh, land so they can build homes for their families. Um, he made an impact in many individuals' lives, to include myself. So I, I was honored to bring that piece of legislation forward, and I thank all of my colleagues for signing on. And he was a staunch Democrat, of course, and a very influential individual. Uh, also, when it comes to Mr. Boise, Tadman, um, Boise Amigo way back, uh, I have also uh, been involved with Zero Taliban Basketball League as a coach, as a player also. So um, we go way back. Uh, we talk on a regular basis, and I am very happy for him. I was very good in basketball, as a matter of fact. Very good. Still am. Still am. But nonetheless, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very um, honored to have also sign on to that piece of legislation, and last but not least, Juneteenth. And here we are in Freedom City. You know, I heard one of my colleagues speaking to us to why, why some individuals have stated that, why make it a local holiday. Let's say no, we have always been leaders, and you know? we have never been followers. We, we, we have we emancipated, emancipated ourselves way before the, those folks in the United States, and we lead by example. And injustice anywhere, is injustice everywhere. And we must support our brothers and sisters, wherever they may be, throughout the world. And that is one of the main reasons why I brought up Peter legislation. We know who we are. We know from whence we came. And we must support each other. 
And it's already a federal holiday, of course, and the governor have to pay administrative leave anyway. You know, but for those few individuals, they should be compensated like every other federal holiday. So I ask for everyone's support, and I thank you again in advance. And Madam Chair, thank you so much One for minute. the time. Thank you, Senator Blyden. At this time, I will, I will last for my four minutes. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing Mr. Harris Callwood. I've signed on, on that piece of legislation because I particularly knew him. When I moved to the island of St. Thomas, I had the opportunity to get to know him more on a personal aspect. Being a staunch Democrat that he is, or was, um, he used to invite me to the breakfast clubs, and he would always encourage me, you need to run for, Saint, for, for Senator on St. Thomas, you know. And I was like, why, well, you think the St. Thomans would support me? So he always gave me that sense of comfort being a Democrat, whether or not I was from the island of St. Croix, and he was very impactful in those breakfast meetings and always held his, his composure of always, you know, being calm, collective, but still strong. So I am in support of that legislation. Um, I've never had the opportunity to meet um, Judge Good, Goodwin um, as a senator, but he sure leaves a legacy of being a remarkable person in this community. Uh, Mr. Todman, and even the June 10th National Independence Day legislation, I stand in support of all of these measures before the Committee of Rules and Judiciary today. So colleagues at this time, I will entertain an, an amendment or motion at this time for these bills. Do I hear any amendments? Yes. I recognize Senator Carla Joseph for an amendment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. Madam Chair and colleagues, I rise to offer amendment number 35-197. Uh, to bill number 35-0006 and and it reads and it reads uh, this amendment was circulated uh, two days ago and recirculated yesterday madam chair if we could take a brief recess so I could make sure that all the colleagues have the amendment but it was circulated um, at this time we'll take a recess um, Senator Gittins will take a recess. Two minutes. Thank, thank you so much, Madam Chair.
committee is out of recess and we are back on the record. Do I hear any amendments? Amendment. Recognize Senator Joseph for an amendment. I, thank you so much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm trusting that all my colleagues now have within their possession the both amendments that I will be offering. I will again begin with amendment number 35-197, amendment to bill number 35-006, which is offered by myself. It reads, Bill number 35-0006 is amended by inserting the following whereas clauses. A, on page two, after line 12, insert whereas the game of cricket was a unifying sport that brought non-residents and residents together and whereas Mr. Goodwin played a critical role in organizing local cricket teams and bringing in teams from the Caribbean region to play in the Virgin Islands, thereby enriching the overall game of cricket, and B, on page two, after line 21, insert, whereas through the alien interest movement, Mr. Goodwin was instrumental in making these aliens aware of their rights as legal residents of the territory and assisted many in pursuing adjustments to their residency status. And C, on page three, line one, insert, whereas, as a result of this case and Mr. Goodwin's advocacy, Thousands of non-immigrant children were admitted into the public schools of the Virgin Islands and would later become productive residents as well as citizens, thereby enriching the fabric of Virgin Islands society. And I so move. Hearing no objections. Properly moved and seconded. Um, hearing no objections, so and seconded by by Carla Joseph, Senator Joseph. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Amendment. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that um, I move to offer Amendment Number Thirty Five Dash Two Two Seven. Amendment to Bill Number 35-0006, offered by myself. Bill number, and it reads, Bill Number 35-0006, Section 1, is amended in the following instances. One, in subsection B, strike Governor of the Virgin Islands, and governor where they appear and insert Virgin Islands Department of Public Works in each instance, and two, insert an appropriately numbered section to read, section blank A, the sum of $10,000 is appropriated in the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2023 from the General Fund of the Virgin Islands to the Department of Public Works to erect the appropriate signage. B, the funds appropriated in subsection A remain available until expended. I so move. Second. Properly moved and by Senator Joseph and seconded by Senator James. There's a point of order. Legal counsel, hey, has a point of order. Legal counsel has a point of order. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Um, for Amendment 197, um, we need to know who seconded that amendment. You stated that it was uh, Senator Joseph, but Senator Joseph was a person that moved the amendment. Can you please restate that? Oh, yes, you want me to restate the, uh, the motion? Yes, the previous amendment, yes, and uh, amendment number 197, Senator Carla Joseph moved that amendment, and you indicated that uh, Senator Joseph seconded the amendment. Can we please clarify who seconded amendment 197? 
Sen properly moved by Senator Joseph and, Sen sec and seconded by Senator Bolkes. Thank you, Madam Chief. Okay. So the second amendment was that was that properly moved? Yes, Madam Chair. That one was moved by Senator Joseph and seconded by Senator J. Okay, so hearing no objections, so ordered. Amendment. No, this is motion now. We, we already did the two amendments. Yes, this one is in, in the nature of a technical amendment, Madam Chair, if you would allow me and be so kind to. Please proceed. Thank you kindly. Uh, Madam Chair, um, I would like to remove the word field from wherever it appears on bill number 35-0006 and insert the word ground. I so move. Second. Properly moved by Senator Joseph and seconded by Senator James. Hear no objections, so ordered. Motion. Motion by Senator Carla Joseph. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I move that bill number 35-0006, an act honoring and commending former Senator George E. Goodwin for his many years of expansive contributions to the Virgin Islands community as a whole, through his roles in various areas of service to the territory, as well as advocation for social justice for underserved people in the Virgin Islands, to rename the Cricket Field, which is now Cricket Ground, located on parcel H of Track 1, Estate Nazareth, St. Thomas Virgin Islands, in his honor, and to award former Senator George E. Goodwin in the Virgin Goodwin, the Virgin Islands Medal of Honor, and for other related purposes, be, as amended, be, be voted on favorably in the Committee on Rules and Judiciary and forwarded to the full body for further action. I so move. Second. Properly moved and bill number 35-006, as amended, was properly moved by Senator Joseph and seconded by Senator James. Roll call. Senator Kenneth L. Gittens. Senator Gittens, yay. Senator Angel Bocas. Senator Angel Bocas Jr., yay. Senator Maurice James. Maurice, Senator Maurice James. Yay, Senator Franklin D. Johnson. Senator Johnson, yay. Senator Carla J. Joseph. Senator Joseph, yay. Senator Milton Potter. Yes. Senator Milton Potter, yay. Senator Diane T. Capehart. Yes. Senator Capehart, yay. Madam Chair, we have seven yays. Thank you. Uh, bill number 35-006 has been voted upon, passed by this committee, and now will be reported out of the full body for further consideration. Point of personal privilege. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I'll be very succinct. I really want to thank all my colleagues, and I especially want to thank Mr. Calvert Gibson uh, for really planting the seeds in my heart and in my mind to really give the honor uh, to Mr. Goodwin to rename the cricket ground at Nazareth in his honor. I really thank him uh, and all the persons who came forward and especially to my colleagues for supporting this measure. I'm deeply appreciative. Thank you kindly, Ms. Madam Chair. You're welcome. Motion. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. 
Madam Chair, I move that Bill Number 35-0011, an act honoring and commending former Senator Horace A. Calwood Sr. posthumously for his dedication, service, and commitment to the people of the Virgin Islands and naming the North-South Street immediately east of Windward Passage in his memory be favorably voted upon in this committee and reported out and forwarded to the full body for further action and consideration. I so move. Bill number 35-0011, properly moved by Senator Bolkis and seconded by Senator Pata. Roll call. Senator Angel L. Bolkis Jr. Yes. Senator Bolkis Yay. Senator Kenneth L. Gittins. Senator Gittins, yay. Senator Marie C. James. Yes. Senator James, yay. Senator Franklin D. Johnson. Yes. Senator Johnson, yay. Senator Carla J. Joseph. Yes. Senator Joseph, yay. Senator Milton Potter. Yes. Senator Potter, yay. Senator Diane T. Capehart. Yes. Senator Capehart, yay. Madam Chair, we have seven yays. Thank you, Madam Chair. Bill number 35-0011 has been voted upon passed by this committee and now will be reported out of the full body, will report out of the full body for further consideration. Motion. Motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I move that bill number 35-0007, a resolution honoring and commended Mr. Boyd Boise Orlando Todman for his many contributions to the people and the youth of the Virgin Islands be favorably voted upon in this committee and reported out and forwarded to the entire body for further consideration and action. I so move. Bill number 35-007 was properly moved by Senator Bolkes and seconded by Senator Johnson. Roll call. Senator Angel L. Bolquez, Jr. Yes. Senator Bolquez, yay. Senator Kenneth L. Gittins. Yes. Senator Gittins, yay. Senator Marie C. James. Yes. Senator James, yay. Senator Franklin D. Johnson. Yes. Senator Johnson, yay. Senator Carla J. Joseph. Yes. Senator Joseph, yay. Senator Milton Potter. Yes. Senator Potter, yay. Senator Diane T. Capehart. Yes. Senator Capehart, yay. Madam Chair, we have seven yays. Thank you. Bill number 35-007 has been voted upon, passed by this committee, and now will be reported out of this committee and be sent to the full body for further consideration. Amendment. amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that amendment number 35-225 amend bill number 35-0009 is amended in the following instances. A, in section two subsection, B, strike or the date observed by the federal government and insert unless observed on another date by the federal government. Section B, add an appropriately numbered section to read as follows. Section blank, Title I, Virgin Islands Code, Chapter 11, is amended by adding section 2001 that reads as follows. Section 2001. Juneteenth National Independence Day. A. The Commissioner of the Department of Education shall reproduce and disseminate information on the significance of the Juneteenth National Independence Day to all public, private, and parochial schools. B. The Commissioner of Education shall also organize and publicize events throughout public schools for the celebration of Juneteenth National Independence Day. Be favorably voted upon in this committee. I so move. Properly moved and by Senator Bolquez and seconded by Senator Potter. I, do I hear any objections? 
Point of order, Senator James. This, we need to verify if the section is section 201 or 200L. Is that a typo? Because I know that the senator read, he said two, 201. Two, okay, objection. Thank you, sir. So do we need clarification? Restate the motion entirely, the amendment. Restate the amendment, Senator Bolkis. Uh, Madam Chair, in its entirety? Yes. Very well. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move <laughs> amendment number 35-225 to bill number 35-0009 to read as follows. A, in section 2, comma, subsection B, comma, strike, or the date observed by the federal government, and insert unless observed on another date by the federal government. B, add an appropriately numbered section to read as follows. Section blank, comma, Title I, Virgin Islands Code, Chapter 11, is amended by adding section what looks to look like 2001, or it could look like an L. So I think that that's where, where the confusion is. 2200L two for clarification. Senator, okay. so Senator clar Bokas, do I need to get legal counsel to give this clarification? Thank you, Madam Chair, yes. Okay, so we'll take a recess. This committee is out of recess, and <clears throat> Senator Bolkus, do I hear an amendment? Madam Chair, I withdraw my amendment. Okay. <clears throat> do I hear any other amendments? Amendment. Senator Bolkus, you're recognized for your amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Madam Chair, I move that amendment number 35-225 be added to bill number 35-0009 is amended in the following instances. A, in subsection two, subsection B, strike or the date observed by the federal government and insert unless observed on another date by the federal government. B, add an appropriately numbered section to read as follows. Section blank, Title I, Virgin Islands Code, Chapter 11, is amended by adding Section 200L that reads as follows. Section 200L, Juneteenth National Independence Day. A, the Commissioner of the Department of Education shall reproduce and disseminate information on the significance of Juneteenth National Independence Day to all public, private, and parochial schools. B, the Commissioner of Education shall also organize and publicize events throughout public schools for the celebration of Juneteenth National Independence Day. I so move. Properly moved by Senator Bolquez and seconded by Senator Joseph. Hear, hearing no objections, so ordered. Motion, Mo Motion. Senator. Senator Joseph. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. Bill number 35-0009, an act amending Title I, Virgin Islands Code, Chapter 11, Section 171A, relating to the observance of national holidays and enacting the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act to declare June 19 a legal holiday in the Virgin Islands as amended, be voted upon very favorably in the Committee on Rules and Judiciary and forwarded to the full body for further action. I so move. Thank you. Uh, properly moved, bill number 35009 as amended was properly moved by Senator Joseph and seconded by Senator Potter. Roll call. Senator Angel L. Bolquez Jr., yes. Senator Bolquez Ye, Senator Kenneth L. Gittens, yes. Senator Gittens Ye, Senator Maurice C. James. Senator James Ye, Senator Franklin D. Johnson, Senator Franklin G. D. Johnson, not voting, Senator Carla J. Joseph, yes. Senator Carla J. Joseph Ye, Senator Milton Potter, yes. Senator Milton Potter Ye, Senator Diane T. Capehart, yes, Senator Capehart Ye. Madam Chair. Change Senator Johnson's to yay. Recorded as yay. Senate, um, Madam Chair, we have seven yays. Thank you. Bill number 35-009 has been voted upon, passed by this committee, and now will be reported out of this committee and forwarded to the full body for further consideration. My colleagues, this was my first rules and judiciary meeting and what a refresher I have had from the 30th to now. And I want to thank you. Thank you all to the testifiers who came out along with my committee members, the non-committee members, the support staff, and the legislative staff. Thank you to the media, public affairs, legislative reporters, sergeant of arms for their assistance. And I would also like to thank all central staff employees for providing additional support for the meeting. Hearing there are no further business before this committee of rules and judiciary. This This committee on rules, is there any, there are points of personal privilege before I pound this gavel? Senator Blyden. 
Thank you, Madam Chair, and great meeting. Thank I just you. wanted to make an announcement that we have a subsequent meeting at 5.30 this afternoon for the Committee on Housing, Transportation, and Telecommunications, and we will have HFA in front of us. We will have the banking and insurance, and also we'll have um, other testifiers in respect to um, our meeting that we had um, last week. It's a continuation, so we recess until this evening. I look forward to a very robust and informative meeting this afternoon. Thank you so much, Madam Chair, for the time. I said 5.30, I said 5.30, 5.30 sharp. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the time. Thank you, Senator Blyden. So I just want to let in, um, my colleagues know that, yes, today is Rules and Judiciary's meeting, and you all know that um, two days are blocked out for rules, and I was most gracious to share this day with my colleagues. So this is what we call teamwork, Senator Blyden. So with, with this having no further business in this committee, the Rules and Judiciary meeting is hereby adjourned.